Hello and welcome to another episode of Rubicon Unlimited. I'm James. Today we're going to look at some steering heft from Terraflex and some functional beauty from Falcon. Okay, before we get into this video, go down below and hit that subscribe button. I'd appreciate it. Okay, let's get into this video. Okay, before we get into these awesome steering components, I feel like I owe you guys a little bit of an update on the suspension that I installed. If you've been following along, you know that I installed the Terraflex ST3 lift kit, and this is like a full encompassing lift kit. It comes with the springs, these awesome progressive bump stops, sway bar end links, front track bar, control arms for front and rear, exhaust spacers, this really awesome brake line anchor kit, and I opted for the Falcon 3.1 shocks. You can get the kit with the 3.3s or the 2.1s. But you guys were asking me, how does it feel? Now I'm gonna compare it to my really old, tired six-year-old stock lift kit, because that's what I had before. And this thing is night and day. It is so much firmer on road at high speeds. It's super composed and confidence inspiring on road. So, you know, you're doing cornering, the Jeep's not flopping around anymore. And I have a rooftop tent, so that was appreciated, but I was a little worried. I thought maybe that stiffness wouldn't be a good thing on trail. But when you're moving at such a low speed for rock crawling, that sort of thing, no, the stiffness kind of just goes away and these shocks really soak up everything. With the three inch kit, this thing flexes like a beast. It was, again, confidence inspiring. I didn't really bypass any obstacles. I just went for it and the Jeep held up. It did really well. I did have one bit of a trail fix. And because I was doing all these obstacles I normally wouldn't, I uh, came across a little weak point in this Jeep kind of layout. And I'm gonna show you that right now. And that's really what inspired me to get these suspension components. And it's gonna really round out the whole lift setup. It's gonna, you know, provide beefier, parts from Terraflex again and again Falcon so that'll be the steering stabilizer that we're gonna install so let's go to the front Jeep so I can tell you about this trail fix I had to do we're gonna talk about this bracket here from the factory and this is for the factory steering stabilizer it is one of the lowest parts down here and it found a perfectly placed rock that hit it right here and when you hit it right here, you can see the witness marks. It flipped the steering stabilizer right up like this. I, I've got it loose right now so I can demonstrate this. So it flipped right like this. When I was on trail, I tried steering. I think it was to the right and my Jeep wouldn't go that way. And that's because the steering stabilizer was getting pinched up with the drag link and the tie rod. It, it just wasn't working. And that's all because of this bracket. Now, if the clamp was designed differently, that would have never happened. And uh, because of that, the stabilizer kind of got junked. It got pinched up in there and it's no good anymore. So it's dead. Luckily, I was able to you know, loosen the bracket, fix it, and I was able to drive home, so that was okay. But uh, yeah, it made me really rethink what was going on down here. And because the Jeep is old, you know, six years, the ball joints are getting tired. There's a lot of flop here. So we're gonna swap all of this out. It's gonna be nice and hefty, just like our lifted components that came with the ST3 kit. So I'm excited for that. So let's get to it. Alrighty, before we get into the stall, I'm gonna give you a quick overview on this drag link tie rod and Falcon Nexus EF 2.2 stabilizer. We got Mr. Drag Link here. This is gonna bolt up into our factory location and as you can tell right off the bat, it is hefty. But this thing has one and a quarter inch outer diameter. So, yep, it's heavy. These ball joints are 50% stiffer. So that should feel good. When you're running those bigger tires, you want something that can handle it. And that's what these guys do. So these guys have chromoly goodness, 4140 chromoly ball stud. And these guys have a great design where the grease fitting is recessed, so you're never gonna smash that off. It's recessed in there, protected, and the best thing about these is you can adjust the preload on them 
So if these ball joints ever get loose or floppy down the line, you can get in there and tighten them up to the recommended uh, torque setting and they'll be good to go again. So these are like a lifetime product. You can even take them apart and rebuild them. So that's great. That's a great peace of mind. Do this once and it'll be done. And of course, TerraFlex provides us with the necessary tool to make that adjustment. It slips right here on the back, allowing you to get that torque setting dialed in. So this really mega tie rod here, look at the ends on this thing. Oh boy. So this is one and five eighths outer diameter. It is so big. Again, this is 4140 chromoly and it's 200% stronger than the factory piece that we're replacing. So that's a good peace of mind on the trail. If this thing ever gets whacked, you know it's gonna hold up. Again, this heft on the end, we got our nice ball joints, chromoly, greasable, and we can always adjust the preload tension on here. Also is set up so that it minimizes the tie rod roll. So you know when you grab that tie rod, you can normally twist it. Sometimes when it's really loose, it'll just clunk on its own on the road. This is limited to 14 degrees, so a lot less of that roll is gonna happen. In my case, I am also installing the Nexus steering stabilizer, but if you're gonna use your factory one, the kit also comes with the clamp for that. So you'll be able to still use the factory steering stabilizer if you really want to, but we're gonna swap it out. And because we're swapping it out, I made sure to order this Nexus steering stabilizer with the clamp that'll fit this HD uh, tie rod. Okay, speaking of steering stabilizer, here it is. The Falcon Nexus EF 2.2 steering stabilizer. And this one is adjustable. So we have the ability to swap from firm to medium to soft. And each of those settings kind of have a specific use. So medium's like your day-to-day. -day. That's like your stock kind of drive you know, city driving kind of thing. Switch it over to firm when you're doing more straight line kind of things, less steering. So I would say that's more of like a highway drive. It really stiffens things up on the road. And then lastly, we have soft. And that's gonna be a trail setting. That'll allow your wheels to kind of do their thing on the trail and give you the most comfort. Okay, enough talk. Let's get these things installed. Okay, to get started, 21 millimeter socket. Let's zip these guys off. Okay, once you get the nut off, put it back on and just buy like one thread or two. And this is just a safety aspect. So when you release the tie rod and drag link, it's not gonna come flying down and hit you in the foot or something. So yeah, go ahead and stick it back on and then we'll remove these things. Because these ball joints have a taper fit, you can't just bash it from the top. What you wanna do is actually hit it from the side. And then it falls loose. Next up, we got the drag link here on the Pitman arm. It's a little tricky to get to, but it's also a 21 millimeter. My boot is looking pretty bad, pretty worn out, and I'm not reusing this thing. So I'm not gonna do it any favors. I'm just gonna ream it out with this pickle fork. Next up, I'm gonna remove the steering stabilizer with an 18 millimeter socket. Right on, so we got our stock stuff off. And look how flimsy that is. Let's compare the two. One's a little guy, one's way beefier. Yeah, what would you rather run? Be honest, right? So this guy's going in, this guy's going to the junkyard, and look how much play the ball joint has. Completely wasted. So yeah, I'm definitely glad we're swapping it out because our steering is gonna feel much better. But we still need this guy temporarily because we're gonna take a measurement. So. We're gonna swap in our new guy, but we want to make sure it is set up at the same length as the stock one And that'll give us a good basis 
for just driving around, but you always want to go and do a front end alignment when you mess with your steering, just because you want to make sure the toe in and out is proper and you're not wearing out your tires. You want the Jeep to drive straight down the road, right? So we're going to get a ballpark off of our stock guy and that will be the same thing for our drag link. We'll reference it. And what I like to do here is actually use the backside and find center because as we know, these ball joints, they move around. So if we took the center of the actual threaded end, it might not be so accurate. Whereas this won't move around. So I'm gonna get a measurement from there and then we'll transfer it to our new parts. Okay, so we got this guy all measured up to what our factory one was. Put a bunch of anti-seize on the threads here, just because this is something the alignment shop's gonna adjust in the future and you wanna make sure that these things can move around pretty easily. So the kit comes with a new nut. It comes with this spring retainer that'll have to go on this end of the ball joint, right at the bottom of the, the rubber gasket. And then for the back, they give us another rubber grommet and that's gonna cover up the Zerk fitting to make sure there's no grit or dirt getting in there, keeping it clean. Now with the spring retainers on the, all the boots, we can go ahead and mount up our drag link and track bar to the factory locations and torque down those new nuts to 63 foot-pounds. Now with our ball joints all tightened up and torqued to 63, we can tighten our jam nuts. All right, all of our HD steering components are installed. We got the drag link and the tie rod. Everything's looking good. Now we can shift our attention to the steering stabilizer. One important thing, we gotta make sure that this shaft is equal on both sides. So the body needs to be centered between the shaft. So we're gonna take a measurement on both sides, make sure that is perfectly even. And then we're gonna take this bolt off the end. This is gonna go in place of our stock track bar bolt. So measuring up each end, I got about four and an eighth for each side. Next up with our 21 mil, we're gonna remove our factory track bar bolt. Make sure to keep your flag nut. This is gonna be used with our new bolt. So this came with the stabilizer. go now we're ready to take our stabilizer fit it over the tie rod and they provide another nut go on to the new bolt here this new nut on our new bolt here is an 18 mil and it's getting torqued down to 90 foot pounds with the new placement of our stabilizer we need to make sure that our track bar collar bolts here aren't gonna come into contact with the new stabilizer. So make sure to loosen these up and just move them out of the way, spin them up a little bit and then tighten them back down. We don't wanna damage up our new stabilizer. So go ahead and do that if you need to. Now you wanna make sure your steering wheel is centered. We've got our stabilizer on here, centered within the shaft. Now we're gonna take the clamp here and we're gonna attach it on to the stabilizer. We got four bolts. I'm gonna put some Loctite on them. It's always a good idea. And these guys are gonna get torqued down with a hex. It's number five to 15 foot pounds. While doing this, you wanna make sure that you're tightening the clamp evenly so that way you have an equal gap all the way around. Oh 
All right, that's it. We did it. We installed the three products. We've got the HD drag link, and chromoly tie rod from Terraflex, and the Falcon Nexus EF 2.2 steering stabilizer. Super simple install, and the Jeep is feeling great. You're gonna wanna go in there and make sure that all the ball joints are torqued down to their spec. So that would be 90 inch pounds. So make sure you have a torque wrench that goes down to that low setting of inch pounds. So 90 inch pounds is what they require. And don't forget to grease all those Zerg fittings with a high performance grease. Right off the bat, the Jeep already feels way stiffer, way firmer. Placing all those tired ball joints has really stiffened things up and it feels really good. If you're someone that's driving with larger tires, like most Jeepers, you're gonna wanna look at a steering stabilizer like this. The stabilizer does an amazing job of mitigating any of those bumps that you would hit down the road at high speed. So it prevents those heavy tires from taking over and kind of creating bump steer. On the highway, you know, those expansion gaps on the bridges, you just kind of float over them. Dirt roads, super amazing. The Jeep flies down them, feels really smooth. And I find that for my setup, because I have 35s and they're actually a little bit smaller than that, the soft setting seems to be perfect for me. If I go any firmer, I'm really trying to fight the steering wheel because I don't have that rolling mass like someone with, you know, a 37 or a 40. And that's why we've got this adjustment dial on the steering stabilizer. So if you're running a bigger tire, you probably want to boost up the firmness to help mitigate any kind of bump steer. And again, when you're off-road or in different driving conditions, you can really fine tune your, your personal preference of what feels right for you. I had a really good time installing these products on the Jeep and showing you guys if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Go below, hit the subscribe button. And if this video was helpful for you, please hit the like button because YouTube will then recommend this video to other people and that's really helpful for me. If you're interested in any of these products, I'm gonna leave links down below so you can go check them out for yourselves. Thanks again for hanging out with me today. I'll see you in the next one.